I was I felt I felt over prepared and I think I I thought too much and I overthought a bunch of things and it just didn't work the way I wanted it to. Did you set your expectations up here? Yeah, and they were just not quite met. Partly partly what happened, but a lot of it was also I just wasn't uh, in, it wasn't in the right free flowing headspace. But yeah, you know these things happen. Oh, and you don't want a railroad. Yeah, of course. Let not. them do let them do what they want to do. Let them do as they do. We're on, buddy. Hey, we're on the internet. Welcome to Critters in Taiwan, a D&D podcast about Critical Role, where a bunch of nerdy-ass voice actors sit around and play Dungeons and Dragons. I'm a critter in Taiwan. I'm Ben in Kaohsiung. I am Tim in Taichung. And I'm losing all my papers because I put the fan on too high. It's, <laughs> it's hot down here, man. I don't know oh, what it's, it's like up there too, in, dude. It's in Taichung, but they're calling for 38 tomorrow. Oh, Ooh. boy. Real, real feel. That's like over 40. That's... Yeah, real feel with the with the with the, uh, the humidity thing. Humidity, thank you. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was a uh, 34, 36. Like I was, I was in my living room with the with that new ass TV, just hanging out, mm-hmm. just enjoying. You know, I set the thing to twenty nine, but then I went out to my balcony to do some to to do some laundry, and yeah. holy shit! When I opened that door, <laughs> blah, yeah, we're in the we're heat in the proper, and humidity, proper depth of summer over here in Taiwan. Good heat, massive heat wave. Um, hey, so listen, today we're going to be talking about Campaign 3, episode number 31, Breaking Point. Wait, what? Did you say the name of the episode? I, I did. What is it called again? Uh, Breaking Point with Breaking Keanu Point. Reeves and Patrick Swayze. Oh, I'm just going through Breaking Bad again after finishing mm. Better Call Saul. Nice. Which, nice. if you haven't seen either of those shows, check mm-hmm. them both out. Fuck. Oh, sake. dude. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah, listen, this was a... Uh, I think I, I was. This was going to be. I was going to talk about this later, but I'm going to talk about it right now. Even Marisha's little uh, called it at the end of the at the end of the episode when she starts saying, "Yeah, go check it out." The episode 30 is when everything happens, and yep. blah blah blah. Campaign one, <laughs> they, they missed they they missed it a little bit. Uh, campaign one was still yeah Briarwood arc uh, in the heart of the Briarwood arc. They should have remembered that because that's uh, Legend of Vox Machina stuff. That's um, they were yeah. filming. They, that's what they were filming, or, or they were. Well, voicing. maybe that's why they got confused about it, you know, because yeah. they, they're, you know, truncating, they're abbreviating, mm-hmm. they're, you know. And then and campaign episode, two. Episode 30 of campaign two was when uh, Travis and Laura came back. This was right after the live show. Right. I mean, so 26 had, is when shit kicked off. Kind of, yeah. I mean, well, that's yeah. the first death, you know? Mm hmm. Like mm-hmm. the new studio? I, well, the new studio has nothing to do with the story. 30, yeah. you, you could make an argument that 30 being when uh, Caduceus and Jester and Ford meet each other, and that's sort of when uh, that big thing happens, and that's when the Mighty Nine sort of gels and goes right to 141. So you can make an argument about it, but yeah. she's, not, she's not wrong. And I think, I think, I think this is when shit is really starting to kick off. Although I think I said this a few episodes ago, uh, it feels like right now is when things are it, it, they're on the way up. Yeah, it feels like it. Yeah, yeah. It feels like, like uh, it. we did talk about that a bit because I was I was saying like I feel like I'm getting too much information, and then I think it was our last episode, or unless it was a private conversation at your place. Mm. I was like, dude, if I, if I have all this information, that means that he's probably going to do something big real soon. Yeah. Well, it really it really felt like in this one the um, <clears throat> they they really through stuff uh like all of these events started happening bang 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 and this episode sort of brought everything a bunch of those a bunch of those arcs uh, not arcs a bunch of those questions into sharp focus you said sharp focus with a t right i did i did i did obviously hey i got a d20 should we (laughs) get a d20 we're gonna do some rollies yeah let's get right into it man starting myself with a 10 right down the middle i started with a 19 there we go. Yeah, that's mm. all right. Um, this dice has been hot for me these past couple of weeks. Yeah. Okay. Dude, so I started. I used to win every rolly. Mm, it's kind of we we flipped mm, over. Mm, I was very confident I was going to win every rolly. Okay. All these right, that's, days I've just that's, you know <laughs> I've, I've accepted. <laughs> we should get. I should get a second camera here on the dice so we can actually see what these rollies are all about. Well, so I mean, you know, in that case, I would have to get one for myself too. I mean, well, there's two sure. people on the honor system here. 
That's true. That's true. Um, okay. So episode 30, this is number 31, Breaking Point. Episode 30, which was called Reunion and Revelation. Yep. Anyway, um, the big revelation was that there's a city on the fucking moon, on Ruidus, uh, behind uh, Divine Gate 2.0. Um, and I, I think my first point is going to be that um, Ira Wendigoth, otherwise known as Nightmare King, um, he lets them look through this uh, veil scatter scope and they look at the red moon, they see the city, and then he's sort of like, oh, okay, I'm going to go check it out now. And he does, but he doesn't. He looks at the moon very, very, very briefly. That's right, he looks at the city very briefly. Mm -hmm. And then Matt is like, Oh, and then the Nightmare King goes click, 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 clicky, 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 click, and shifts the telescope, the veil scatter scope, um, to another place. Yep. And this, I, I need to know where this is because <laughs> I, I wrote down his entire soliloquy. Can I read it for you? Yeah, go for it. Okay. I'm not going to do a Nightmare King voice, but this tripped me out because he's like, ah. I kind of wish you would, but. I know I wish I could too, but I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I don't make millions of dollars for my, my voices. I, bar I can barely speak in a voice. Um, <clears throat> ah, there. I see what they're doing. Not much time, but I must watch their faces as they fail. They were fools when they thought they could do this alone. They were fools to think others wouldn't work to steal the thunder out from under them. But me, I just want to be the first there and the one to make the choice for them. Who? Who? Tim, who are they? That is and a who lot. is he looking at? There's a lot in there. Oh, I, I, I watched that and, and I mean, I, you know, I watched this with subtitles on with the closed caption. So I wrote it down verbatim because there according is so, CCs. well, yeah, according to it. And then it gets really weird because then about that's at, that's like, you know, two minutes later, uh, he, they, they have a little discussion about that. And they're like, and this is when they're, they're trying to get to him, but he's put the wall of force down and yeah. he can't get to him. Then he says, this is the one that really tripped me out. They lost the crown, but they could have finished the moor. That's no matter. The moor. What? M-O-O-R. Moor. They could have finished the moor. What, what does that mean, Tim? <laughs> I mean, you're asking the wrong guy because I got the same questions, man. I mean, like, what, what is then, a moor? Okay, so then, so what, a moor? What is a moor? Like a moor it's, is a thing in a swamp, right? I it's think like of a, a swamp. Yeah, that's what I think. A fen or a, it's like a wetland uh, geolo a geographical feature. Yeah, where things change fairly kind quickly of, over time. Yeah. Re relative yeah. ge ge geological shit, you know? Sh sure. Relative. Yeah. Like, you know, like, e uh, like ecologies? Local, uh, what am I, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know. I mean, remember when they were in the, when remember when Vox Machina were in the in the Feywild, and they went when they went to get uh, I believe Fenthris the so, the bow, and yeah. they go into that giant uh, swamp area, and yeah. like that, like that was a, there was a lot of rivers and a lot of it's where they also where they met um, they across twelve rivers to get oh, they right? crossed all these rivers and then they get into like this boggy area that was what I instantly thought of is that the 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 they had built this the Unseely Court were building this veil scatter scope their they own version of it court. and <laughs> they, <laughs> they were building it in a like an isolated part like a moor somewhere where it's like difficult to get to or something but but they could have finished the moor what finish how do you finish a moor like what I don't even know and that's when that's when he grabs the crown breaks it out of the thing and bamps out he's gone yeah. Cool. Kudos to Matt too by not letting them have that relic. That's a that was a, I was waiting for it. I'm like they're gonna get it. They're gonna yeah. get it. Nope, they're not gonna. Like get it. I mean, no one, no one fern with her stick of fangers, you know, but she's not so great at it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, she would have yeah. tried. Um, yeah, there, there's a there's a lot in that thing that I. Uh, for one, I was very uh, distracted when he said "steal the thunder from under." I was like, mm -hmm. "Okay." I immediately went to the like the Australian <laughs> Chippendales. I know, of course. <laughs> yeah, uh, just for for what it's worth, chat did also. People okay. were quoting. People were quoting Midnight Oil at that point. It got it got pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, so I had, I did have to go back and like listen back to it again. I was like, "Okay, mm -hmm. he's saying a lot of shit that nobody knows right now." Yep. Yep. 
and uh fuck i do have a i do have a point about this can i yes and right now no, or do you have more to go. say no i i have nothing but fucking questions okay yeah i think that's kind of this is in the same vein like okay mm -hmm. so uh Right after he says that, he, there's a wall right there, right? And yep. then uh, it's yep. really early on in the episode where mm -hmm. uh, Fern says, like, can I take a look? And he's like, eh, it's fairly occupied right yeah. now. Yeah. And then somebody tries to Imogen. go. Imogen does, and Imogen there's a wall. Imogen tries first in the wall, and then Fern tries and hits the wall as well. Right. So, like, mm -hmm. so uh, Ira has the crown, you know, and mm -hmm. then there's a, a wall there. Now, my mm -hmm. question as somebody who's very very non-knowledgeable about the whole game of D D, etc sure is like are is there a spell that you know of that would have this kind of a wall is this yeah, a dm just like no, him wall just like force. spilling this say it again wall, wall of, of force? force we saw it in campaign two okay. um uh what's his name uh trent ikithon he cast Ikithang. it when thong when they were fighting remember when they had that Im weird impromptu battle in the in the sanatorium the, uh, the and one then, with like the seven counter spells, or the... yeah, that one, <laughs> that yeah, that one. Um, the the I, I believe there was a wall of force on when they were trying to get those amulets. It's like was physical a wall things of force. can't get through. Force. Spells can't get through, and physical spells can't get can't through can't either. Nothing, no, it's but it's sound a, can get through. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure, which it, is I know magical because that's know, you know vibration of you know magic particles, magic, but, but right. magic, but magic. Yeah, you know, take hey, one. Let's, don't let's use, not bring don't physics use, into this. Don't bring physics into D and D. It doesn't work. You just Matt, you end Matt up, said it multiple times. You end up getting upset. Yeah, everybody ends up getting upset. Which, uh, sorry, tangent. That's what I was talking to you about the D and D thing. Real world physics. In Taiwan. Real real world physics got brought in got uh, brought into the, my game on Sunday, and it became very awkward for a little while, and uh, it was un uncomfortable. Uncomfortable for me. Uncomfortable for the players and. It was a little bit of a yeah. It wasn't wasn't very pleasant. I know my players don't watch this, so I don't care. But I mean, we're gonna we're gonna have a discussion on next session about how to deal with events like that, situations like that. Incongruencies, perhaps. Yeah, just or like people, the, the meshing of magic versus physics. Well, it wasn't even so much magic. It was just just physics. Oh, it was just like, physics. It was oh. mostly just physics. Yeah, oh. and and physics don't work in D and D. Like it it doesn't it doesn't work that way. I mean, it, I just guess it just doesn't. You'll have to tell me about it sometime. Or I will. Whatever. I don't want to. I don't want to say it. It, it, it won't be. But whatever. But anyway, the yeah. It, <sighs> Wall of Force is a very very high level spell. I forget what level it is. Seven, maybe six. I forget. Um, it's but it's very powerful, and it's right. um. And you get level six spells at like level fourteen oh, or I something. Don't, I don't even know. Who knows, right? I mean, uh, it yeah. could be different different classes. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You doing research, Roma? I I am. All right, yeah, because I was thinking, like, it was it just the DM putting a thing out there. It seemed familiar because I think I've seen it before, you know, like, vaguely, but, like, I don't play D&D, &D, so I don't know these kinds of things. But then I was also like, there's so much homebrew going yep. on in this thing that I was like, whatever the DM says goes, because there must be some homebrew, because there's, like, seven homebrew shits going on mm -hmm. right now. So I'm just like, all right, well, whatever Matt says goes. It's yeah, just like, he has that freedom right now, because we don't know either. None of us know. Yeah, it's a fifth level spell. I was trying to remember what destroys it. It's a disintegration. Disintegrate. I think like that came up, didn't thing. it? Yeah. In a campaign two, didn't it? I think when Caleb so. disintegrated a, a. Did that come up, or am I dreaming that uh, up? Come on, sounds, man, that rings a bell. It does ring a bell. Uh, it sounds familiar. It sounds right. He may get, have done get that. Get in touch. It's it's got to be yeah. there. Come on. I remember. I remember that it was a cool little map, and then that's when the wall was protecting the doorway to get into that place. Um, and there was like it was, it was a little hat semicircle of a wall of force protecting it, and then yeah. I believe Jester uh, Dimension doored behind it with Knot, and then they started stealing stuff, and then that's when Ikathon showed up. Right. There was a I was, there was a lot of clusterfuckery going on in that in that. There episode. was, and I I usually I always trust Liam to go raw, you know, mm, and then he'd be like, mm, mm, can I? Do I know that Disintegrate would take this out? You know, like, I don't know. that I might it's, be making that up now, but... It's possible. That seems like something Liam would do. Anyway, so the Nightmare King casts it, um, which is which is actually an interesting thing, because if he's casting fifth-level spells like that, um, or maybe as an item that does it, it's possible, too. We don't know. Um, I, again, it's, the, it's that DM trust, right? Like, they didn't... 
They don't have counter spell anyway, so I don't think it really matters yet. But we didn't see him cast a spell. He didn't do any like the, the right. VSM stuff. So it could have, you know, he just, I don't know. A little bit, little bit wonky there. Um, maybe Matt's like, it wouldn't matter if you saw it anyway. It would have been too quick, uh, possibly. But he, so he casts it. Um, it lends credence, what I was going to say, it lends credence to the fact that he's like, when they first fought him, they didn't even come close to beating him. Like he, he said that at one point. He's like, I could have... I could have taken you all out, and he probably could have. Um, probably. But, yeah, I mean, probably. The, the motherfucker has legendary, you know, actions, yeah. resistances, yep. Yep. you know. Yeah. Like, who knows what would have happened. Yeah. Um, as I they said, they were last... all freaking out. They're like, legendary yeah. react. What? You know, yeah, yeah, they're like. Well, right. Matthew says, now like, hey, know. look, there's seven people here or eight people at that well, time. Like I said last week, there's a reason Seven, why. Eight. Why they when they they wouldn't fight? Why well, Erica would not engage them because she would have been chop suey if she had done that. Yeah, you know. But as they said in the four sided dive that we mentioned before, yeah. that there were some items Matthew that may have leveled the playing plan. field. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Matthew had a plan for that to be mm-hmm, a mm-hmm. very hard fight for them. But raw, I mean, just straight up, uh, we know that it, it's it's one of those things where um, you know the the mechanics are in place that it, that you know. 30, 40, actually, even less than that. 10, well, let's let's just put it up. 50 level one fighters can take down a T-Rex because, because sure. of odds, right? Just because of probability. In the, whereas in, in the real world, um, 50 level one fighters would not be able to take down a, a T-Rex. But no. D&D is not real world. It's so cotton balls on a brick wall. Yeah. Right, right. <clears throat> so those kind of things. It's it another gets, physics thing there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the old photoelectric effect. You know what I'm talking mm-hmm. about? I do. Electrons yeah. and stuff. Right. Rollies. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we're back to rollies. Yeah. Let's do it. Oh, 15. oh, my God. That's a nat one, dude. Oh, boy. My 15 holds. Okay. I'm going to go to the next page. I say it every time, but there's got to be something for we... nat ones and nat 20s. Well, hey, listen. I, I don't know. My, I have a DM. If you're watching, you know like who you are. Or something. I have a DM that that does um, not twenties, just raw, like just double damage when you do them, or or is automatic success or whatever. But he punishes us badly for not ones. Like he's like, no, something very very bad happens, and I like I'm not, it. I'm not a fan. Not, not a fan. fan of, no, <laughs> it 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 it's a little it, it's unbalanced. It, if the not twenty oh, I see only what you're does a, a couple like a, a success or whatever. Uh, and then that one is like a critical failure. It's unbalanced. I'm not. A, that's what I'm not a fan of. But that's the way. Every table is different, right? Yeah. Um, okay. I'm. We had a conversation about this uh, Friday night, I believe. Um, a text conversation about this, where uh, when when Orem pulled out the weave lens, and he's like, "Oh, it doesn't work." And then Ashen's like, "Hey, can I see that for a second? And he he's like, "I, I tap it with my hammer." And I he, he didn't say that. He did this first. Yeah. And then yeah. after that, Liam said, you know, he's like, I, I need I just, to let you guys know I what just know that happened. Two, min- two minutes ago. <laughs> yeah. And he was like, and then that's when yeah. uh, Talisman was saying like, oh, yeah, I gave it a tap. And it's like, I gave it a tap. That's with my not, no, you did. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. hundred percent. He was, I, I think Talisman at that point was realizing he was like, oh, what have I done? Have I yeah. done? Have I made a terrible mistake? And he says, he's like, well, it's a magical item. So it shouldn't break. Right. Right. And Which holds weight. I'm here. Yeah, I'm here to say to confirm that I know from experience that in older editions, magical items couldn't be broken. In they older were, editions. In older editions. Yeah. Which is where. Which is he's. Talison has said this before. No, magical items can't be broken. And it's like no, absolutely they can. That's you're thinking of like other editions where That's magical a weird items. game kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> yep. But I mean, here's here's the other thing. Ashton has like. He, he doesn't really understand magic stuff, so why wouldn't he do that? Hey, let's see if this is magic. Smash. Oh, hey, it's it's not magic. It broke. But what experience would he have with magic items and, like, Ooh. trying to break? Like, is that something he experimented, uh, experimented with in the past? Yeah, you know? like, true. True. Uh, let it me was... see that crown. Is it really magical? Yeah. No, it You're can't right. be. You're like, it totally was, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it was. Uh, here, my, my whole take on it is, yes, you're right. It's a little bit of weird metagaming, but it also is a really fun little punk thing. It to is. Do. Yeah. <laughs> if, if Ashton is the punk guy in the, I mean, I, I think I told you this on the, te- on the text, uh, the text thread, 
I was like, this is all I, as soon as he started, when he did it and I rewound it and I watched it again, all I was doing was no effects. Punk guy was playing in my head. <laughs> I think, oh, other guy's more punk than me. You know, that's, that's all I could think of was just, I was humming that song for hours afterwards. Yeah, man. It was even, even Matthew, you know, didn't catch it. And just like Liam nope. sitting there, just like, yeah, yeah. It oh, was... Chat, chat was very upset about it. Um, they were freaking out. They're like, "What, well, Ashton? What have you done? What have you done? Why would you do that?" And I was like, "I, well, I was I'm definitely not upset. In fact, I actually think it's kind of good. They got their glimpse, and now they like, hey, they have some knowledge. They have in, totally. uh, some information now. Totally. And let's move forward with what we what we know. You know, mm-hmm. and like uh, mm-hmm. they don't need that lens anymore unless they get the crown again, put them in the same telescope. You know, no. they don't really I mean, need the, it. The crown was showing was letting the the scope work." The lens was what was showing the veil. The oh, the okay. um, that was what was showing the divine gate. The the thing that was surrounding right it, the, the the, the lens veil scatter scope scope right. So I think the crown is what's letting it work. The lens is what's showing the cage around Ruidus. Right, I and, believe uh, they already saw it. Yeah. So hey, it's yeah. fine. You know, mm-hmm. Ashton did what he did, and I. Don't have a problem with it whatsoever. It'll be it'll be fun to it'll be fun if they do it when they wake up. They didn't, but it'll be fun if they try to use the little lens because uh, they did mending. La- right? Londa did, did Laudna did mending on it and it brought it back together imperfectly. So it'd be it'd be interesting to see if the enchantment. I mean, raw, no way. The That's not how it gone. works, right? Yeah, yeah. Enchantment's gone. Like but, a, but, if you tear a magical pa- uh, magical pages are really hard to tear or impossible yes, to tear, tear. Right? Difficult, At least. but not impossible. Yep. Yeah, and then if you mend it, it's just mm-hmm. like, well, yeah, you mend it, but the the script is there, but it's not magical anymore. I would I would say that the magical paper. I mean, I don't know this for a fact, but I think as a as a burgeoning DM, I would say that magical papers could only be cut by magical weapons. Or that tools. makes sense. Yeah, That's what, it's like diamond can be t- cut with diamond, right? Right. Right. Yeah. Yep. 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 That's that's how I'd that's how I'd rule it. Fuck. Yeah, I don't know if that's actually true or not, but that's I mean. This this is so we I think we did we talk about D and D one or one D and D last week the big announcement announcement the wizards we didn't talk about this yet I kind of forget the, they're not doing they're not doing a sixth edition yet um, they they're calling it one D and D and it's sort of like integrating all of the what what it just sounds like Run DMC ah one one D and D Run DMC mm, nice uh, the they're they're integrating the digital tool set, the D and D Beyond stuff, and then they're giving making they're they're changing a few of the things. It's all going to be compatible with fifth edition, which is really good news. I'm really happy about that. So um, be like five e two or something. Kind right? of, it's just an update for for five e. I think is all is what it really boils down to. They're calling it one D and D, which is fine. Um, for me, the the um, the funniest thing was is that they. They loosened up a bunch of the rules, like for example, the um, the 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 racial abilities, like a, that a half orc gets a plus one to his constitution, a tiefling gets plus one to the charisma. They're 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 taking those things away, which makes sense. I'm all for it, um, because the, it doesn't make sense that racial abilities are, are across the board. Yeah. Um, it, it makes sense that there's always exceptions, like you know, goblins can be good; they don't have to be <laughs> evil. Those sorts of things, right? Um, and they're linking those those ability score bonuses to backgrounds instead of race, races, which I'm all for. I think with, where, where I'm, it's, it's great. Where I'm going with this, I think it's hilarious that they need to make rules about a game that uses 100% imagination. You can just make up whatever you want, man. Like there's nothing. It's 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 cute. It's like okay, you're you're making a bunch of rules. For that I can choose to ignore. It says on page one of the DMG, these rules are not rules; they are guidelines. Do whatever you want with them. So it's like, right? That's we don't need these rules. We can do whatever we want as long as everybody at the table agrees with it. It's all good. I think it's yeah. I think it's funny. So that sounds, that sounds kind of cool. Like for somebody like uh, who's like super new to the game, mm-hmm. they could be like, okay, so here's what I have, and be like, yeah. oh, okay, so uh, you spent two years on the ocean. Uh, put a plus one on your charisma. You're like, 100%. Oh, really? Oh shit. Yeah. You know, like Absolutely. Like just because of that they get a, right. you know, plus right. one for this or whatever. That, whatever it may be. Right. That's and it's kind of the way it should be. Um we shouldn't be we shouldn't be chained or anchored, you bore the the ocean metaphor. We shouldn't be anchored to these things that are absolutes. There there can be um 
this this really I, I was talking to a buddy of mine uh old school guy who played pathfinder and 3.5 with he um we were chatting about it and i was sort of like it we knew this we knew this back in 1988 when r.a salvatore wrote the crystal shard i don't know if you remember if you're familiar with that at all uh, no. uh dritz dorden the the black the drow elf who is um good whereas drow are always evil in you know canonically uh, where, but but he wrote the story. He wrote a story. He, he, I think he wrote seventeen or eighteen novels with this character, Dritz Dorden, and he was a good elf, a good dark elf. Um, and it sort of flipped it things on its head. Should be available. Tab. Yeah, hundred percent. You know, we, you know, we knew this in the eighties. Anyway, I dig like a like a like a dwarf with a with a bad constitution. It should be available. Sure. You know, yeah. like a dwarf with a high charisma. Yeah. <clears throat> which was fun to play with in our mm-hmm. in that in that game we played on that's right Sunday. yeah that's right yeah uh, uh hey that was me what do you yeah, got yeah I, I got a yeah sam what what was your initial point i don't remember oh about remember. uh ashton going more punk than me right okay um i don't have anything that's directly off of that I've got a couple of things here that I don't know what I'm referring to. I'll bring those up at the end, I suppose. <laughs> um, I'm gonna I'm gonna use this one here because it has it has I got like five lines of something. It says, "Well, we listen to this like an audiobook, but it's good to remind ourselves that Matt especially is nailing his improv. For example, Fern's parents grabbing each other's hands and chatting. Okay, I guess this is just a, this is a very much an evergreen uh, uh, yeah, comment. Yeah. I believe what you're referring to there, if you're unsure, I think that's when she had the heart to heart with them. She took yeah. them into the other room and did the therapy session with them. Uh, yeah, yeah, it definitely is. Okay. And uh, where he he sits I and mean, he takes the moment to say that, like, oh, and then uh, you know, uh, uh, Birdie reaches over and grabs his hand. You know, mm-hmm. he he mm-hmm. takes a moment while she he interrupts what she's saying to make yeah. that clear. Yeah. You know, right. That's something I would never think of because, you know, I mean, well, again, I, I've played D&D twice in my life. And then uh, I don't know if that comes from pressure because they're on the Internet and they have to make sure that they act everything out like more than other oh, people sure. do when they play. I think you so. Know? But to think of something like that, he's like, OK, yeah. like he's in the character's mind while Absolutely. she's talking. He's absorbing he's... information and then still reacting to it in such a way uh, that, you know, it's like makes sense you know mm-hmm. their parents and that's he why spent, holding hands he spent now. a lot of time developing all these npcs right he's put a lot of thought into who they are and he's he's really probably spent a lot of time in their heads or developing who they are so he's like yeah they would do this and they would do that and this is what they would do yeah and i guess yeah. he expects the same from his players it's, you know especially it, at this table you know to tack on to that as well it's it's one of those things where you're 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 he's a master of being able to um, interject like that without taking away agency, which right. is a which is a, a skill, man. It's a really big skill. The and it's, main word, the operative word there is interject, not interrupt. Yeah. Right, <clears throat> right. I've got many friends who don't understand the difference. Like <laughs> right, the difference. Yeah, you're dude. You're interrupting me. You're not. You're not adding anything to this. All you're doing right. is taking away. And just like tacking yeah. on information, you're mm. interrupting. It's like, dude, mm-hmm. I'm still talking. What the fuck. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Good. Yeah, it's, it's very. It's it's a it's a skill. It's a it's a legit skill. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh, shit. Rollies again. I'm in. All right. Let's do it. Boom. Eleven. Ooh, eighteen. I finally there win you, one. There you go. There How you about go. That? All right. Which one do I want to choose here? Um. Uh, I'm gonna go a little bit more uh, evergreen again. Okay. Um, I feel like Matt has been confirming theories, you know, like mm-hmm. with his recaps in the beginning of the episodes. Uh, not his theories, are you know anybody else's theories. So sometimes mm-hmm. they're kind of left up in the air a little bit. Mm-hmm. But then when he does the recap, I feel like he's like solidifying. Like he says something that was like kind of hinting at this, but then he'll say, "I wish I had an example, but I don't." Um, and then I he'll say like, about. oh, and then this happened, and which point you knew that this was the case, and be right. like, I didn't know that, but now I do. I make right. I make a note, you know. Right. And I'm wondering how uh, 
deliberate that is on Matthew's part. I think you it's, know? I think it's I think it is deliberate. I feel I think we talked about this a few episodes ago. I think he's about trying to drive it somewhere. The, the railroad, you know? it's, not railroad. I wouldn't say railroading. I think he's I trying to drive shit forward. You know, I use I use the word railroading just because it's the it's the word. Um, right. It's not, it's not. It isn't that. What it is is it's he is like you said. He's directing them forward as yeah, opposed instead and, of staying here, you're going mm-hmm. forward. Re- it, like I see railroading is like don't go that way, don't go that yeah. way, go this yeah. way. But like making sure that you understand this information yeah. and go forward with it. I feel like that if he's doing it on purpose, I don't know. The the and the I guess um, nobody really does. The 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 uh, I think I was going to do this. I was going to try. When w- I was going to try and write down the actual timestamp when and then when they did finally get their long rest, but it was one of the longest. Unless anybody else has anything they'd like to do before you go to bed, that that when they were sleeping at the Callaway layaway, when they were like as they were going to bed, every single. I mean, Sam made the joke a couple of times. Oh, just one more sending, Matt. Uh, uh just one more thing, Matt. Just just one more thing, Matt. He made that joke like two or three times, and they still didn't finish there didn't begin the long rest there was a lot going on there so in that in that case like you say this is a, this is how like matt doesn't think they're even going to stay there originally they were just going to the, there for to go check it out and then come back to paragon's call because they're still they were supposed to go to paragon's call the day before right and they didn't they stayed overnight so matt's <clears throat> the the uh, the whole idea of him being uh, needing the plot to go forward is is part of that. I think. I think. Yeah, and like I wonder how much the players at the table they sit there while he's doing the recap. If they're <clears throat> blasting through their notes, just like getting ready, or if they're listening to it and being like, "What's confirmed? What's not confirmed?" You know, because he'll you... say, you know, him. He's always like, "What sure. seems to be or what seemed to be." You know, and then sometimes mm-hmm. he'll be like, "Yeah." So like. Uh, uh, this is not what he said, but like, so uh, they understand that the Paragon's call would expect mm-hmm. them to return back to them, you know, and be like, wait, what? <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, that's the, not what they said. Don't. No, no. I, but but, I, but I think, he, I think, um, no, I lost my train of thought there. He kind of, he kind of, he kind of, uh, I just noticed, especially in this last one, I should have written, written down an example, mm-hmm. but uh, yeah, he just seems to be giving information that confirms or usually confirms right. something that right. we may have thought of, yeah, but I, that I, was not necessarily confirmed when they did it. Yeah. I grabbed, I grabbed onto my train of thought there. Yeah. I, I wonder, I wonder how much of that is them, all of them, uh, debriefing bef- like at the end of an episode or on their thread, or even just when they're finished the stream or the recording, uh, when they sit down, if they sit down and they actually have a chat about things and they're like, Hey, well, they're this and that, or before, if, if Matt does a recap off stream, like Good if point. they're yeah, are, if they're doing like before when they sit down and he's like okay well you guys remember like last time on Dragon Ball Z we did this and then they laugh and then they can ask they're they're free to ask questions uh, it's not the recap that we get it's the recap they get right so there yeah. might be a bit of that maybe was it, maybe was it this episode or the last episode where Ash Ashley was sitting there and she was like. <gasps> And they were like, "What?" Like a couple of people saw her, and they were like, "What?" That was what? last. Was that, that was the was last, the one, last one. one. That was the moon. The she was like, moon I'll, city reveal. I'll tell you after. And then yeah. Matt was also involved. He's like, "Oh, what do you got?" And you're like, "Yeah, yeah. just tell us after the cameras." Yeah, just turn tell off. us after. Right. And so, like Matthew was in that thread. Sure. Thread as well. Who knows what Ashley was thinking about? It, it could have been something. She didn't want to say it because she was like, I, "She was." A, I could see it in her in her face. Like that's that look that somebody gets when they have an amazing idea that they're uncertain about. They're like, yeah. I might get laughed at the, Everyone might laugh at me when I say this. <laughs> so it's like, I'm going to save it for off camera so I don't get completely yeah. humiliated. And, yeah. and good. If, good if the history shows, you know, mm-hmm. yeah, she is, she is worried about that. Mm-hmm. Anytime she gets flustered, she gets so embarrassed about like yeah, sure. not doing her, uh, uh, her additions quite right. Yep. She does like one D six at a time, which mm-hmm. Laura called incredibly cute. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you got I, think, a yes I, and? I do. It's not related, but it's still kind of fun. Um, it is kind of uh, uh, on on the same line, I suppose. I really, I at, at like an hour in, um, after they're sort of like they're the the when when Ashton had sort of or Tallison had recovered from his embarrassment of smashing the lens, he starts. I thought it was really really That's more cool. Tallison, yeah. 
Yeah, it was Tillotson, but he was like trying to get back into it again a little bit. But the um, you could still see he was reluctant to really do any or say anything. I thought it was really, really awesome that Ashton was the one who recognized that the Callaways were uh, unaware that they were um, their memory was Swiss cheese. That Ashton started to was the first one to sort of realize or really to say it that they, there had been some modifying of their memories, uh, that there were holes in the story, that they were uh, good people who were doing bad things. And I, I was like, this is, this, is a, this is really on brand, and I'm really happy to see that it's him doing it, uh, or them, I should say them, really happy to see that it's them that are, that are uh, recognizing uh, broken people, uh, that be, him being a broken person. Them, they quite literally, broken, yeah. Broken them, I don't know. I, I'm terrible with pronouns. <laughs> that was one of my notes from a couple of weeks ago. I'm like, God, these guys are good at yeah, pronouns, man. They're very good. Well, they're, <laughs> with the days, yeah, this and, is. I guess this the is same sound, thing instead of him. You know, this like is separating the really actor stupid. versus the yeah. They're all they're all actors living in Hollywood. Of course, they're good at pronouns. Los Angeles. I mean, come on, right? You know, yeah. everybody there is probably terrific at it, and we're just. Yeah looking from the outside like damn you guys are really good at this uh yeah yeah I, it's I think, a little confusing at times when it, they say it, like when they say this i'm like yes. wait are you talking about these people or are you talking about fcg i know you know like it's, <laughs> it's hilarious because like in chinese it doesn't exist right mm -hmm. I, I can't wait till the chinese start getting involved in pronouns it's going to be hilarious it's not going to make any sense no it's not i mean <laughs> They have the written pronoun with the knee, you know, where they've yeah, got yeah, the, yeah. the female one and the male yep. one, you know. But yep. if there's if it's Neiman, it's yep. always the male. It has to yep. be, you know. Yes, exactly. But there might so it's be an be... issue with that in the future. You know? Could be. It'll be it'll be interesting if to it's see. All if... women, you have to use the female. Yeah. Or just or he she it. It's just or just ta. Ta. yeah yeah. It's like, what what do you how do you how do you square that? Yeah yeah. <laughs> I, I think know, Ta I also has a female version of it, but if you oh, know it's it? female, I. think think it does i'm not i'm not certain on i don't that. think it i'm pretty sure it doesn't but i'm meeting right somebody to talk about beds later so i'll hey, ask them ask yeah yeah i will that'll be a fun conversation um no that's that's sort of that's that's what i i was i'm i thought was kind of fun because he starts questioning and then it's not for like half an hour later he brings it up a couple of times and then about half an hour later is when imogen starts digging in with the tech thoughts and finds the swiss cheese right um and finds that there are holes this smear i love the i love matt's description of the smears there's these smears these blurs of memory where things are not i was like that's a really fun way to look i i again i get those uh cuba gooding junior robin williams from uh that movie they made well, what dreams may come it's a. Cuba's it's a, in that one. I'm pretty sure he was. Huh. Fairly certain. It's been a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, that's like yeah, that was that's that was my sort of yes end. Huh. Not a big one, but it's but it's it's you know. Uh. Yep. Travis was there doing something relative to that, or Chetney was anyway. Fuck. I forgot what uh, it was. Yeah, Travis. Head, Travis was. was doing. Travis was doing a lot of the sirens and the uh, and the the like. Had his little, you know, yeah. looking around and a lot of his 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 face is uh, yeah, it's awesome. His his facial expressions are amazing. The kind of, yeah, the realizing that's ah oh, shit, you know, because mm -hmm, it's not necessarily mm -hmm. intelligence, you know, because uh, Ashton doesn't have a high intelligence, but he is experienced. And that's yeah. wisdom, right? So yep. he would be like. He would say like, "Oh yeah, magical items can't be broken." Like, mm -hmm, that, mm -hmm. sure, that works with wisdom, but intelligence, perhaps mm -hmm. not. Yeah. Not so much. Yep, yep, yeah. yep. Hey, should we do some rollies? Sure, let's do it. <clears throat> Ooh, a little sixteen there. I got a nine. Nine. Um. All right, this one I have no idea what the fuck I'm talking about, so I'm gonna leave that alone. <laughs> uh, uh, that one I guess I'll save until later. Um. Uh. What we kind of found out, it was kind of a big moment was for me in this one, mm -hmm. where Matthew just kind of said out, just put it on the table. He said, I'm pretty sure it was Matt. It was Matthew to Talis, and I'm pretty sure. Fuck. I was just listening earlier, where he was like, and you remember when they said it was a one-eyed monster destroying everything. Mm -hmm. Now, 
that was a huge moment. You know, yeah. I just got chills yeah. thinking about it again. You know, mm-hmm, because that, mm-hmm. there was that outburst that FCG had, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, but in the past, like I don't know, maybe five episodes ago, Matthew threw out a red herring. We didn't know it was a red herring. He was like, "Oh yeah, there's there's these uh, creatures up in the mountains. They got the one eye. You know, it's like yeah, in the same area that they were, you know, like found mm-hmm. or whatever. I don't mm-hmm, know if it mm-hmm. was the same area or not. But oh, yeah, he, sure. he's always been looking for a one eyed kind of monster to mm-hmm. see who did this to our party. Well, he, he in that same breath, he also mentions to Ashton is like when you found FCG, one of his ocular yeah. things was broken, and it was so it was red, wasn't it? It was no, it wasn't not when he found him. Okay, not when he found him. No, but he but says this, like the. But he's like, it, it, when you found him, you remember that one of his ocular things was broken. Right. And, it, you know, you're looking at him now with the red. You're like, one eye, red, uh, connect yeah, the dots. he spelled it out. He, he spelled, spelled it, it out yeah. for us, yeah. Very much, very much. Which, uh, Which you know. Listen, like, we I, all, we talked, I think we talked about this a long time ago. We all, we sort of were like, yeah, it's possible. He could have been a murder bot. Could have been. Yeah, well, we <laughs> we tossed it in there like it was fucking nothing. Yep. Because yep. we don't know anything we with these homebrew know, classes. We, we still don't know that. We still we don't st- know it for sure. Yeah. After all, even after the end of this episode, we still don't know that FCG killed everybody. We don't. But <laughs> yeah, it's but looking. It's looking. When Matthew <laughs> says it like that, he didn't yeah. say it like a red herring. He said it like, and you remember mm-hmm. this. And be mm-hmm. like, fuck. Mm-hmm. You know, and be like, oh, yeah, what I said before, forget that. It's, it's this instead. Yeah. Be like, Matthew, you can't do that. Mm-hmm. That's why mm-hmm. I'm thinking that this one is, I oh, think, yeah. and his reaction, uh, sorry, uh, well, Dancer's reaction to him was like, don't fucking talk to me ever again. What you did mm-hmm. was whatever the worst. I'm paraphrasing. I wrote it down. I've got it here somewhere. Um, I could I could read it for you. No, I didn't. Oh, yeah, here it is. Um, This is her last one. Please leave me alone. I barely got away. I hope I never see you again. You know what you did. Yeah. 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 So then there was the static. And, you know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It it was it was serious. Um, I can I don't plead unless there's fear. Right. Mm, I mean, that's kind of how it goes. Right. She sounded scared. Very scared. Very nervous, very afraid. And the way like, that he blew up, like, yep. you know, he was just well, nasty. I don't know if I he was a, telling the truth. He was just being nasty. I got a like few things Fern to say was like, about and that. they were worried about this. And you know what? They were right. You know, like, yeah. that's just being an he, asshole. He yells at Chetney first. Why don't you shut up? Why don't you shut up? Why don't you shut your fucking mouth? And then he says to Fern, your parents didn't like you. Your parents don't like you. They never did. And that's why they got rid of you. And you know what? They were fucking right. Yeah, just he, being nasty. And, yeah, he's he shouted that. I got a that's theory like when a about friend that. gets back into a corner when they're drunk, you know, and you're trying to help them, and they yeah. blow up at you just because totally. they're, you know, like like a wild animal, you know. Yeah. Like, I got a good, I got a theory about that. Um, I don't think he was talking to them. I think he was talking to himself. Oh, everything that he said, he said when he's like, "Why don't you shut up? Why don't you shut up? Shut your fucking mouth." He 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 talks a lot. He's he's always help FCG is always helping, always talking, always always giving advice, always do you know? And this is an insecurity of his. <laughs> he's your parents didn't like you. Your parents don't like you. Dan, you know, dancer doesn't like him. They never did. They never, she never liked him, and that's why he they got rid of you. Or or maybe not maybe not uh, dancer maybe the owners before. Yeah. That's why they got rid of him. They didn't like him. That gets a little That's dicey there, you know. And you know what? They were fucking right. They were right to get rid of you because you kill everybody. It could be projection. Yeah, it's projection. I think. I, so, if I can, if I can, if that I can, some high level fucking RP. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Jesus it is. Christ! If that's yeah, I went back and I watched Sam's face when um, when Matt is like, "There's static flash flashes in your mind." And he's like, you get, he rolled, Matt rolls the dice and he's like, you get four points. And yeah. Sam, everybody Sam's, was like four points of what? Four points of what? <laughs> if you watch, if you just focus on Sam at that moment, I was in my pocket at that point. If you just focus on him, go back and give it a watch because he's like, oh, oh, he's, he says oh. that's not good or that's yeah, bad. And you can right? see it. It's not shock. Cause he's it's gotten not... one point. He's gotten two points mm-hmm. before. 
and he, nothing really see, changed, right? You can see that he's not surprised that this happens. You can see that he knows exactly what's going to happen. He's just taking a moment to try and figure out how it's going to happen. And now, and so, so, I believe that I believe a couple of things. Both may be true. When they were building the character, you're like a uh, Hindu. I, 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 be, I believe that when when they were building this character, when Matt and him were building it, they had this discussion about who he was before, who it was before, uh, and what that would mean if it would ever come out. I, also, and so I think they ran through a bunch of different scenarios of how that may go down, um, and where what so to be ready for it. Right. Um, and I, and, and they have I, to be right. Of course. Now I wonder. I wonder if Matt was like, "Hey, if you're going to call Dancer at some point soon, you need to be ready for this to happen because I'm going to, I'm there may be there may be a possibility if I roll high enough on the dice that it will happen this episode or this ep- or an episode coming up very soon. So there may have been a warning uh, by Matt uh, when as they were like, I mean, they 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 talked about they talked about calling Dancer. Uh, m- sending da- a message to Dancer a couple of episodes ago, or last episode. So Matt may have been like in between episodes, been like, "Hey Sam, by the way, if FCG does decide to do this, remember what we talked about when we built this character, and you may be forced to uh, go back into Murderbot mode, and you need to be ready for that and get things ready." Because right. those those things that he yells at at Chetney and Fern are thought. Of in advance, I'm sure he has one for Laudna and Imogen and uh, Orem and every. I'm sure he, and Ashton. I'm sure he has one for everybody. He just was only able to get two of them out. It was unfortunate that he rolled so low on the initiative because he rolled he rolled lowest on the initiative when when they rolled. He rolled a 14 and everybody else rolled higher. Uh, it's unfortunate wow, really? because we yeah <laughs> because we would have he was and what a and waste. <laughs> I have a, I have a, if I may I have a point about that. When he rolled, when he realized, uh, as the others are all calling out uh, their initiatives, Sam's shoulders slumped because he knew. I could see it in his in his body language. I gotta watch he knew. This. He knew that he was he was last, and he starts looking at his notes and he's like, "Well, I guess I'm not going to be able to say that. I'm not going to be able to say that. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not going to get this." Huh. It, you could, you could, I could see it. I maybe, I may be extrapolating a lot. I'm going to skip to the after the break it. after this and watch that yeah. again. Yeah. I could see it in his in his body language and sort of his facial expression where he's kind of like, mm, mm. he's kind of looking, and he kind of I could see him flipping in pages and notes and. And getting ready for things that never came out because he rolled so low on initiative, which, which, oh. I'm just gonna, if I can keep going, if you don't mind. This is this is why they didn't why you didn't fight the rest of them because you the you Savaya they knew Savayed they knew that Miss um, sure uh, they knew <laughs> that. If they did fight, they would have got fucking fight. wasted. That's right. Because yeah. listen, it, it was okay. It, yeah, Laudna rolled a nat twenty on that uh, on that thing, um, and and does fifty hit points of damage, and then gets the 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 psych. How do you want to do this? And then Fern does heat metal. I mean, they were savage on FCG. They went. To they town. they really did. Three Ashton grapples uh, on brand. Laudna's uh, thing was Laudna's thing. Well. There, I, I, okay. Brutal. I don't know if she uh, she rolled in that twenty, so she didn't mm-hmm. you know expect it to be we, that we don't brutal. Know that but that fuck, um, it was brutal. Hunger of the shadow. We don't know what that is. That's nobody a did. Thing. Yeah, it's a homebrew thing. I think we well, we still don't know. No, we except don't. Know. Matthew and her. That's it. It's it's likely in of uh, uh, what I was. I, okay, I'll admit I went on Reddit on this one and uh, I was reading through the thing and I leave that to you. <laughs> people people were saying it's probably a. Um, a homebrew spin on inflict wounds. That's probably what it is because of the dice that she rolled, but who knows? Um, that makes some sense. Yeah, it does. There, there was some thought put into and it. Inflict like, okay, wounds can be pretty rough because you got it's yeah, touch, right? So you got to be right yeah. there, but yeah. it's like, what, 66 or something? It can be, depending on what level you cast it on. It can right. be, I think it's D8s, it's like cure wounds, D8s. Okay. Um, yeah. Which is what she, she rolled a couple of D, uh, three D8s, I think. Um, and anyway, does fifty? Does I think she rolled four D eight? Yeah, I'm th- I think that's what it, I'm thinking of when uh, Travis fucking lost Jester. his mind. 
Uh, mm-hmm. I was thinking when Jester did it to Bo when they were like, oh, yeah. Yeah. And I punch her in the fucking face. And you're like, yeah. inflict wounds. Jesus. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, that's right. Bleeding black ichor. That, you know? was the, that was at the gentleman at the gentleman's place. That's yeah, what it was. That's right. Yep. <laughs> they started their own fight club. Um, yeah, I, I I just okay, so when I watched this on Friday, I was like, what the fuck, guys? Like, why would you you don't PvP somebody that seriously? And I was a little bit like, this is out of character for all of them. When I watched it the second time, and to, to, when I take my notes, I started realizing what was going on. Ashton grappling FCG, that's smart. That's what he would do. He's like, hey, buddy, hey, buddy, calm down, calm down. Right there in that's, RP, yeah. Right. And then I realized why Laudna did it, because Laudna heard, was like, she even says, Marisha's like, and Laudna hearing Delilah's voice running back in my mind, they're all going to betray you. They're all going to betray you. They're all going to betray you. Uh, I realized at that point, I'm like, oh no, this does make sense. She's insecure as fuck. That makes sense. Yeah. Like, you're going you're gonna to do this. Fern, I'm like, man, you didn't really need to get in there with the heat metal. And that was a little bit extreme. But, all right. All it's right. also level one spell, right? Mm, no, I think it's level two or level Is it three. level two? Fuck. I should know that from last Sunday. But. <laughs> he, he, Heat metal might be a, I, I can look it up, but I, I don't remember. It doesn't matter. It's still it's still a little bit um it's pretty unnecessary. Brutal. Yeah. I, I think I think in it when you think about it, you're like, no, I'm just gonna heat metal and just sort of heat him up a little bit. But it, the heat metal mechanics is serious damage. And also it, it it lasts. Like like Matt said, you still have heat metal running. It's like, no, 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 because Imogen did, did the calm emotions thing, and she's like, no, 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 I'm calm. I'm calm now. I would have let it go. I'm like, jeez. Like, you, that, that's a lot of failed death saves there if it's still going. Yeah. Oh, I liked that, by the way, when he said, yeah. like, roll a death save. Because, like, yeah. when people were talking and shit, I'm like, that's yeah. Liam stuff. You know, like, mm-hmm, Liam does mm-hmm. that all the time when he's like, this conversation yeah. has been going on for a while, and he's like, guys, just so you know, I've been rolling death I'm, saves. They're I'm not rolling going death saves. well. I'm rolling, I'm, I'm ro- yeah, I'm not, I've yeah. failed. That is in not his good. head, six, you know, like, yep. <laughs> I, th- I may be making it up, but I swear there was one time where he told Matthew, he was like, Matthew, I did a death save, and yeah. I was a failure. Oh, yeah. And no. I think Laura was and like, Laura why was would like, you do that? You he doing? didn't ask you, you to. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and he's I like, that it's moment. been yeah. six seconds, <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Like, mm-hmm. totally. I love that. And the fact that Matthew did that. How do you keep track of that shit so well? It's it's just it's all the experience and the whole and the knowledge ability. Oh. I just I'm just in awe every time I watch this. Hey, lazy girl. She's been, give, she's been giving oh. me the sad eyes. So I got to give her a little bit of love. Yeah. She's good. Did she get a, Did she get a walk before uh, before we started? Nope. No. Oh, she's nope. probably. I, I gave her a walk at noon. So it's like this a few hours ago. She's okay. good. I probably She's might have to pee more uh, worse than she does at this moment. Good girl. Um, I've got one more that's really, really relevant. So I don't think it warrants a rolly. Okay. Um, sure. Like I, I have here, um, it's quite vague on my page, but I'm pretty sure it has to do with everything on this. Like, how mm-hmm. much did Sam or FCG know? And uh, the important part being Sam versus FCG. And I think we've already really talked about that. Kind of had. Like, yeah. Sam was ready it's... for. Uh, you, uh, you are. I keep mm-hmm. using the word purport incorrectly. Uh, you assert that Sam had things prepared yeah. if he gets to this stage. Yeah, I think now, so. Now, another thing that I was going to say, like, I, I played uh, Heroes a couple, a few times with some friends here. It's kind of like D&D, but it's, you know. It's, mm-hmm. Yeah, you've told me about it, yeah. Yeah. And I, I rolled this real terrible character that had multiple personalities. And uh, what this reminded me of was uh, because there there were four personalities like one was a pacifist one was a i don't know and there there were four that one of them was an anarchist fucking chaotic motherfucker Mm -hmm. what this reminded me of when when matthew said and you take four points and sam was like okay that's not good you know like (laughs) i gotta mentally prepare for this Mm -hmm. that reminded me of like okay so one point is like okay you malfunction a little Mm -hmm. Two points, you malfunction more. Three, you get a little testy. And then four, you become fucking chaotic or whatever. You know, like there's levels to it. It, That's what it reminded me of. For sure there is. And they, only they know what those are because it's, we we don't know who, who FCG really is. And also we don't know if there's a five or a six. I mean, I'm 
you know, sure. I just assumed four was the highest just because of what happened. Mm-hmm. But if there's a if there's a higher level than that, oh, I bet there, I bet there is. If there's even I mean, a six, because nothing stops at five in D and D. That's always a four or a six or an eight, well, right? It's always usually, the, usually even numbers. Yeah, usually. Well, it's the dice, right? You know, depending what dice you rolled, if you rolled a D four, if you rolled a D six, roll. Who knows? Yeah. Um, I think oh, we do know what those points are too. By the way, he slipped and he's like, "Yeah, you, you. By the way, you, your stress points go to zero. Yeah, he did say stress so points. He, we know and what those are. Like, oh, okay, oh it's stress here points. we go. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> which points, confirms points. what we were saying before. It was a high stress, not high stress. Yeah. It was a high pressure, high something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Uh, lots of shit was going on, so we took a the, point. He let it slip, yeah. Which, hey, man, that's Matthew's things uh, these days. He's just totally giving tons of information. The so. the the whole my whole again. I'm just just to reiterate. I think they've had this conversation, and I think they had a they they re upped the recap. Um, they uh, did another they did another uh, catch up sort of a thing where they talked about uh, no, it's <clears throat> if you're thinking about calling dancer. There is a chance that it's going. You're going to do this, and yeah, I think there were. I think Sam was well aware um, of the of the of the what's going. What would happen if if they called um, if FCG called Dancer? I don't think it was a surprise. I think that I think that um, there he already knows. He has to kind of know. He I has mean, to. It's part of his backstory. You he, know. He, I mean. Yes. But well, that doesn't necessarily mean one thing or the other. No, but... because Molly, because Talison created Molly Mock to specifically not know yeah. that Lucian was a thing. Just fucking um, brilliant. I just wish he played that character better. <laughs> same, same, same. I know we all we all do. People who people who like Molly Mock from the get go were wrong. They're just wrong. They he <laughs> he was not Molly Mock was made me spit they, on my nice screen, man. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> they they were not well fleshed out. Uh, it was a fun character that Talison had a lot of fun Great with. Great character, but it was just poorly but it was played. Poorly played in the beginning. It got yeah. better at the near the end. Uh, well, you mean um, the end of the campaign? Yeah. No, the end. The end of the the end of his <laughs> Molly Mock's life. Oh. Um, but yeah, no. It, whatever. Oh, we didn't do oh. house cleaning today. Oh, by the way, spoilers. Uh, spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> an hour, an hour in. Um, yeah, 56 minutes in. Yeah. By the way, uh, spoilers. All right. Um, hey, I got it. What was? What did I want to say about? Oh, right. The um, the same vein. I know what I was going to talk about. Orem's passive perception, realizing realizing that the buzz saw was a different color. More, but we that was, we already knew that kind of that that was from uh, buzz saw. The buzz saw came from pussy. From pussy, yeah. Um, and but, the grapple came from oatmeal, right? Oatmeal, right. But the big one. The grass, yeah, the blades on of the grass. Chest. <clears throat> not uh, Matt saying that eh, they might not be blades of grass. They might be streaks from fingers. Yeah, or maybe. And uh, I, I took it a different way. I don't think they're in. I don't think they're etchings. I think it's uh, it's blood stains. Oh. On the dancer, metal, hard to say. Dancer, dancer, reaching out with her hand, and. Lightly Blood, and bloody, strongly, bloody, bloody fingers. See something like that. That would be just Matthew, not not Matthew and Sam. I would Maybe. think. Maybe. I don't know. Hard, hard to know. I mean, impossible at this point. Totally, totally. <laughs> For us to know. <clears throat> uh, oh no! Hey, I just I wrote it down. Um, the FCG does as he's fading, as he goes down. He looks at Laudna. And says you were never alive. That's there, right. So, yeah, that's right. So there were three say, things. Yeah. He does say three things. And again, that but that again, that's the same again, thing. Go back to my other point. Projection. That's an, inter- that's an internal thing. You, you no, I, I'm FCG. I was never alive. Right. So it's like a, uh, an, a an internal internal um, insecurity that he's not. Like he said several times. He's like, I'm not alive. I don't have a soul. I'm not living. And that's Man. that's yeah. So. I mean, man, <laughs> I mean, man. If, this, if, if this is all true, sorry to cut you off. Uh, like Sam, in the very, very beginning, he was the one that was just kind of like, "What D and D? What are you talking about?" And then yeah. now he's the most involved. Like oh, you got to his... find something that you can say to each character that has something I... to do with yourself too. If what you're saying is yeah. viable, I said this before. I said this a few episodes ago. Like Scanlan, 
uh, freaking out, and then he plays uh, Darian, and then get campaign one, and then campaign two, it's Darian. Beth turns it to uh, not turns it to vet. What did I say? You said Darian. Uh, Darian. <laughs> Tarion Darrington, Darian Tarrington, Darian Tarrington. Um, <laughs> um, the and then uh, and then uh, not the brave turning into Veth Bernardo, and then now this it's FCG turning into Murderbot. Like there is there is some Sam Sam is a big fan of the multiple personality stuff. Yeah. The 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 the, the whole idea of I I think it'll be I think it'd be really fun to see him do another Scanlan you know, taking off and then bringing a new character in. I like that idea. I always have. I like that Molly disappears and Caduceus comes in. I like that uh, Scanlan goes away and, and um, Tarion comes back. It's, or comes in. It's, yeah. I, I think it's, I love stuff like that in, in these long campaigns. Yeah. I think the idea of running one character for 150 episodes, that's boring. I not boring, but it's, it's predictable. Yeah, it's it's a uh, conventional, perhaps you know, and like we we yeah, have conventional is a, a good way of saying it. We have a hint of it with uh with Dorian, 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 Dorian Storm. Dorian? Yeah, right. I was confusing that with Matt's character, Dariax. Dariax. Jesus Dar- Christ. Dorian Dorian Axe. <laughs> but like he's not one of the core people on the panel, so you know, so we consider it like a guest mm. character. But I mean, he's definitely involved. But then we also got Opal over there with that crown on the side. Mm-hmm. Like that's gonna come back in. We know that at we some point. We the, there's a lot of uh, Reddit is filled with people saying that that she's gonna that Opal will come in, that we will get uh, Dorian to come back again, that we're gonna get the that they're gonna show up because the problem, the problem that Matt has is that that crown, be later. that crown of thorns that Opal has, is a relic, and they it, they're too low level to to bring Matt. It's I a can vestige. tell Matt it's a vestige. Sorry, thank you, a vestige. That's what I meant to say. Okay. Um, I think <laughs> that I think that well, Matt, of course it's a relic. I, yeah, no, no, I meant to say vestige. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, it, it's a vestige, and I don't think Matt wants to bring a vestige into this right now. Not I yet. Think, there's, a, there's a there's a distinct possibility that that Moontide crown was a vestige as well, although that's. I, I mean, I'm just assuming at this point, you know. Like, uh, it's it's uh, it's conjecture. We have no idea. It was pretty powerful. Um, I, there's so I, much I we don't to, know. Yeah. Talking about Dorian, we did get a Dorian. Liam sent a message to Dorian. Oh, that's right. But, yeah. And Matt did a great great job. We we get we we got the very first PC turned to NPC voice. The very first with Keyleth. Oh right, right, right! This was yeah. the very first, the very first time that Matt has voiced a PC turned NPC. Remember, and it was very appropriate that it was that it was Marisha. That it, it, and listen, if you, I don't know if you watch this one, but go back and watch Marisha's uh, "Cat Got the Cream" expression. She's sitting back with this one. Oh, it was in my pocket. Oh fuck! I didn't book. see it. She the she the smile the grin the 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 wonderful expression on her face for the entire time Matt is voicing Keyleth yeah. is I'll, I'll I time stamped it if you want it you he want does to write a pretty good job of it too it from what really I remember good. And it was really good correct me if I'm wrong either you or anybody who's watching this I think they had a discussion about this where like Matthew said like uh, there was a question on Tox Machina for the first campaign. Mm-hmm. Like of all the characters that you voice, which one is your favorite to 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 Jaeger or whatever, you mm-hmm. know? And uh, I think they said, "Wait, he's never done Keyleth." Yeah, like the only one he's never done was Keyleth. Yeah. Like he did Scanlan, you know. Like everybody mm-hmm. else, he did multiple times, or multiple times, at least once. But I think they said, and I think that's the first time that Marisha got to hear Matthew do one of her characters. Because mm-hmm. I don't think he ever did Bo. You know? No, I don't think so. The the I time stamped it. It's two thirty two thirty five. If you want to go, if you want to you want to go back and watch it because when when he starts, it's Definitely that's the going sending, right back to that first. That's when that's, that's when on the Imogen, Twitch. on Twitch, yeah, on Twitch. Okay. Uh, when Imogen sends the message, Orem's message to Keyleth, and we get Matt's first voicing, and Ke- and Marisha is just she's sitting back, and she's just it's just a huge smile, and she's sort of her head, she's kind of like. <laughs> It's also it's, the love of her cute. life doing one yeah, of her characters. Yeah, hundred percent. You know, it's the well, it's the oh, first. Man. It's the first. He's he. This is the very first time Matt has voiced one of either campaign one or campaign two characters. Yeah, hasn't for he hasn't her. Done, yeah, he hasn't done either. Yeah, 
No, for all he did, he did a, a moment in campaign two where you see the girl with bright red hair with the antlers, and she goes, yeah. but no voice, and then no runs voice. up and just yeah, but no, <clears throat> mm-hmm. that was all they saw. That's right. Huh. This is the first voice, the very first one, which I thought was a really really sweet little thing to to happen. It was really yeah, great. All right, I'm gonna. Uh, I'm out of points here. It's all. It's, we're already too. after an hour here. I'm gonna say I've got a point written down here. It says on the <laughs> Twitch one fifteen forty seven, Chet keeps the candle lit, and then in parentheses it says Fern. I have no idea what I'm talking about here. <laughs> oh, this is this is when they. This is I. I've got I got I know where I've got a timestamp that's right around that point, so I know where they were. This is when they were trying to figure out the why the Callaways couldn't remember um, remember things. They were like they were they they that they were like why yeah why would you why were you leaving why did you leave Fern for six years if it was a hundred years or ninety years for her but it was only six years for you why would you even do that why did you leave them for six years and then. Fern makes a comment. Well, yeah, you know, it's like, and then Chetney's Chetney makes some remark about um, how they. Oh yeah, no, no, no. You want, he brings you want it back up this. or something? Is yeah, that what I mean by yeah. the candle lit? You want you want some of this? Like you, if you you want some of, you want some of what's what's going on over here? I'm paraphrasing, but something like that. I rem- vaguely remember that point. See, th- this is the problem that I <laughs> with taking notes the first time I watched through because yeah, this I don't, that my first don't three notes it. were. The first time through, mm-hmm. that's I, why I, I guess I just figured second time through I'd make yeah, I would make sense of it. But I make I make mental notes. Um, I'm like, hey, when this is an important thing, remember this the second time you watch it. And so then I'm like, and then when I get to that point on the thing, like, oh yeah, I, saw, I made a mental note to myself to re, to re, to do that. That's yeah. I don't trust I, myself that much, man. I'm like, I do. I build song mind ideas, etc. I'm gonna lose that shit if I wait five minutes. I'm a big fan of the mind castle, and I so I've, that's what I do. I build a mind castle in my in my mind so that that it triggers it when I get past, get to that point in my mind castle. Yeah, I think my mind castle's getting weaker over, I have over a, the years. I have I have one more fun little thing to talk about. The, sure. The, at the very very end, when Orem preaches, he does that big long soliloquy. Um, I, I got <laughs> I got really really strong. Um, uh, Avengers Endgame, Steve Rogers, Captain America vibe out of him. I was like, this is this is kind of the, it's almost identical to what uh, what Steve Rogers says in that movie, where he's trying to rally them all that this is what we have to do, and we may not all get along, but we got to go and do this. We got to go fight Thanos and blah blah blah, and you know this whole thing. And he rallies them all, and this here we go, let's go, and that's you know because I just thought it was really funny because. Not ten minutes before that, he's telling Imogen about how good of a leader she is. Right, and then and then it's like you could be a leader. Yeah, I know leaders. He's also saying how smart leader. she is. You know where? Yeah, I think last time yeah. we talked, her intelligence is what ten, eleven. Yeah, it's it's low. It's a dump stat. Yeah. That might be eight. It might be eight. It's quite. But low. her wisdom and charisma, you know, like yeah, oh, she's street yeah. smart. Sure, totally, totally. But yeah. yeah, it made me it made me laugh. I'm like, really? You're and now all of a sudden you're the leader. Like, yeah, <laughs> it's. Yeah, and you and I just spoken person. about how she's not really that, you know, and then he comes out with yeah. this. <laughs> they, I mean, Vox Machina didn't really have a leader. I mean, Mighty Mighty Nine didn't really have a leader, although you know they they it, they were not on Ford a lot. Yeah, yeah, I suppose he mostly that's because he was in the beginning early stages as well because he was the face he was the high charisma and the yeah. the, the you know expertise in um in deception and persuasion and stuff so um yeah yeah i don't see <laughs> Although, a lot of D parties just don't have leaders it's just not a thing right it, you know it's, and it it's, shouldn't it, be expected it, it takes it takes agency away from a lot of the uh a lot of the other players at the table and that's not fun to do so I mean, in real life, yes, parties have leaders, but in D and D, when you play it, eh, not so much. I mean, what do you mean by real life? You know, like if I if I bring my experience from video games, there's always a leader. You right. know, you that's, have that's to what, choose a party that's leader. What about, like, you know, for for example, remember when they uh, in Zadash, I think it was Zadash, when they did when they did the in, in campaign two when they were doing the fighting pit, and they had to fight all those monsters. Um, and oh, they, like they, inter- yeah, 
and they were and they and they they met up with um the other paladin what was his name uh i forgot the, but they were called the stubborn stock that was the mer- group of mercenaries but they met they ran into the guy a couple of times he was the, it was definitive, the second time right yeah it was the second he was the definitive leader of that party they didn't talk to anybody else in that in the stubborn stock they only talked to the one dude so it's like you know but so that's what I don't, when I when I say real life, I don't mean real life. I mean in D and D or video games or other stuff. There is definitive leaders, NPC yeah. leaders. But in a, in when with the PCs, there almost never is a leader. I mean, you got you got bands. I'm in a band with four people. We all have a microphone, but uh, yeah. Sean's the one who talks to everybody. You know, sure, <laughs> sure. Like, but uh, you know, we all put our equal parts into writing a fucking song. You know, mm-hmm. yeah. I agree. Um, hey, hey, listen, I, I'm done. I got I think nothing. I got to pee more than uh, Lacey does. <clears throat> she's, I don't know where she is anymore. <laughs> Maybe she's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna look at 115.47 to see what the fuck I was talking about with keeping the candle lit. It might come up. I'll, I'll, I'll probably send you a text later to see what exactly what I was talking about. Sure. And then 232.35, I really want to check out Marisha yes. responding to Matthew. Yeah, you do. Yeah, I gotta do. see that. Yeah, you, you know, do. like I'm a, I'm a, I'm a sensei. You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> I want to see. It's a wonder. It's a wonderful look of, of thank you. It's just a big thank you. I just pictured Keyleth <laughs> in campaign two going like, <gasps> you know, just. Mm. <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, let's wrap it up then. Yeah, let's wrap it up. I'm good. I said right, everything cool. I need to say. All right. Uh, hey, y'all, if we're full of shit, we get something wrong, we get something right, you love it, you hate it, whatever, get in touch. Are like best ways, comments down there. and uh, Or email. I don't know. Fuck. Have you ever checked the email actually since we started? No. I think I Maybe. checked it once. Yes. I checked Not it once recently. and I didn't see anything. So I, just we, haven't I, checked it since. Yeah, I should. I'll take a look right after this. Yeah, we might. We should probably check that. <laughs> I'll take a look. <laughs> see if somebody's in there and be like, you guys never <laughs> check your fucking email, man. Uh, anyway best way best way to get in touch is uh, yeah, uh just there. leave comments right down there youtube, YouTube um, comments if, are always the best yeah if nothing else i gotta take a piss i'm good all right cool. well, hey y'all don't forget to love each other and is it fi- oh wait is it finally next friday oh yeah they're off next week yeah they are. yeah and we got no four set of dies or anything yeah nothing we'll take we a week just, off we just got two weeks it. Oh, yeah no yeah. It seems like a lot these days. You end know, of, end of summer, man. End of summer. I might do. So, I might go somewhere next weekend. You should, man. Take yeah. care of yourself. I went to a fucking waterfall yesterday. I don't know if you can Ooh. tell I'm sunburned. No, you can't tell oh. at all. No, you're pasty. No, there's no. <laughs> We're all pasty. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, mm-hmm. hey, take care of yourselves. Love each other. Is it finally Friday? Cool. Peace, man. Peace, bro. <laughs> take it easy.